All right, so competition means there is a market. In the camping industry, there is a big war going on, uh, and it is for simple software upgrades. Now, there are 14,000 different RV parks and campgrounds in the entire United States. 76% of these don't use any technology for their reservations, their management, or their operations. Um, yeah, so this kind of fits with the industry, right? It's all rustic, they're not using a whole lot of technology, you kind of disconnect. Well, this is an opportunity for us. So the competition in the market, there is absolutely no market leader. There have been old antiquated softwares that uh, have been around for 15 years, have not taken a majority of the market, uh, and are actually losing to the new guys coming in and showing a more uh, upgraded feature set as well as a better look and as well as uh, more simplistic uh, usability. Now one of the big things is with these competitors is they're also doing a lot of the aggregate uh, reservations, much like you do with bookings.com, hotels.com. Everybody pits their, uh, their sites uh, online and pits it against the local one two miles down the road. Now, a company called RV Spot Finder uh, came into existence about two years ago and was in this same area. But we like to listen to our customers and every time we had a conversation they said, you know, I really don't want to pay you all of this money to, you know, pit me against uh, everybody I'm competing with in the geographic market. I'd rather just, you know, just have a way to actually market to my customers by having them come to my website and do online bookings. And oh yeah, uh, I don't have software, so can you give me something that would actually allow me to manage my software? Uh, naturally, I said yes, and we actually pivoted into a new company called Bonfire. So Bonfire is a simple reservation management platform. All right. We provide three things for our customers. That operational platform that is basic feature sets such as calendar, a rack, uh, core industry reports. Uh, we also allow for CRM functionality and keeping of data for their customers. They can use it in various ways from email marketing uh, and such as well as heck, having their phone number so they can call them up and set them up for a reservation next year. We allow them to have an online booking URL, so their own dedicated page that lists all of their sites and inventory, and that is connected to their website via this lovely uh, Bonfire branded Book Now button, uh, which takes them to that site. We also integrated payment processing. So this is now an all-in-one system. They can have their customers go online, book a reservation, pay for that reservation, uh, and they have those payments on file, and they're booked and ready to go, and they have that automatically come up on the rack area as you see in the right, uh, basically a calendar view and this is an uh, example of the booking screen, very aesthetically pleasing and very simple, we are not going for complex. So in our customer market we are surely focused on the very small mom and pop shops, your campground, RV park, you must take reservations, we actually focus on those parks that have 5200 sites, our average right now is 65 sites per customer. Uh, if you make a phone call, you can find out other fun things about your customers by making, uh, I made about 2,000 calls between, uh, when did I come on, April and now. Uh, in that time, that's how you got to do it, you got to make the phone calls. We found that these parks actually have two to four person management teams. They actually use pen and paper and they take reservations by email as well as pencil. Uh, one of the cool things is when you have a new owner, they basically say, I want to decorate this place uh, in my own way. So we made it a simple pricing model. We charge them a monthly subscription fee. They get all of that for one simple price, and we do take a very, very small transaction revenue and offer them low-risk opportunity with no contracts. So in the past uh, five months, I've gotten, well, past year, we came on with two active customers. Uh, in the past two months, which is most of our traction, uh, I've been able to increase that to 15 active customers on a subscription model and when we are uh, off and running with revenue should hit break even by uh, June after we gain 50 parks. Uh, our customers see our value as it's very simple, it's trainable, and it is basically making their life a whole lot easier by automating an already manual process. Thank you much. All right, questions. So I'm curious how this is different from Active Network. I believe they do uh, campground and uh, state park reservations. 
they do active network their branch is called reserve america they have a very very good looking system however it is well would go price it's overly priced they take a fee for every reservation and when you have a small park that has 50 sites and you're taking three dollars every time they someone makes a reservation and they're staying for three four or five months they're giving up a whole lot of money and they don't want to do that so first off price second off they are more of an aggregate search engine for for these sites than actually a reservation software so our core product is the management software of the reservations and that automation process the online bookings and the payment plat the payment processing that's extra that's like the cherry on top of the Sunday for them so we differentiate ourselves by actually giving them a useful tool for their operations uh, instead of just a search engine. Um, this is a bit of a personal question. My parents own a very small RV park. I'd love to have their phone number. Okay. <laughs> well, the, so the, their market isn't tourism. It's um, wind energy in the middle of nowhere, Texas. Is this a, is this a product for them? Uh, how many sites do they have? Probably 26 to 30. Uh, my, my smallest park uh, is 12 sites, um, 25 we can easily do. Uh, the question comes is, how's the process? Is it manual? Uh, do they find they have more things to do outside of the reservations? Do they want the opportunity for people to uh, book online? But who's their clientele? Uh, I have found that there is, no matter how big or small your park is, if you have 90% of your, of your sites are taken up by seasonal RVers, what we call snowbirds, uh, the guys that come to a campsite in New Mexico during the winter time for six months out of the year, there's, there's less of a value there and less of a pain point. Uh, it's more of one, I know who you are, I know when you're coming. Uh, so we have to really dig into, which is where the phone calls come in, we have to kind of dig into who are they catering to. Uh, so we actually focus on the guys that have a lot more of the daily as well as weekly or weekend campers, the high traffic um, campgrounds. So I'd love their phone number, love to talk to them, at least for the feedback. Yeah, so um, how do you define reliable internet? You're, you're dealing with remote locations. Uh, I do not define it at all, I ask them. They know if they get spotty internet. I have, there are many, many times where they say, look, I just don't have the right internet. My cell reception sucks. Uh, so, well, I'd love to continue talking to you. This could be a great tool for you. And they go, well, I know this is not gonna work because I just don't have the internet. Um, so there's various ways we can go well, we can try and save that sort of deal, but you can't force something that's, that's not there, and they know their business better than I do. Um, so it's kind of one I just I leave, leave go. So if I was going to make a reservation, can I pick my site? Yes. Okay. So part of the operational software is they are able to give specific details on the site, how big the pad length is, uh, you know, whether it's, it's cabin is AC, various details, and all of that correlates onto, um, I won't go back, it correlates onto the booking page. You can make the best possible decision with that information instead of having to call in and ask this and ask that. Uh, so there's still quite a bit of hand-holding with this in high touch, um, but we try and help push that process along. Real quick suggestion. Um, we found out about cradle point hotspots, which um, if you have spotty internet or, lo or no internet, sometimes you can get it. Yes, so yeah, just, we're trying, you know it. trying to go with the whole uh, partnership in that area where it comes with you know, pushing internet provider to them. If that works out, then it also works out for us. 45 seconds. Uh, what's the average cost per site? Does that make sense? Or average revenue per site? Average revenue. Reven per I site. mean, like you know, like what you're what you're generating. How many what? sites do you have? I have no sites. I mean, I'm, I'm like you guys have no clients yet. How many clients do you have? I have 15 clients right 15. now. 15. Okay. The average average number yeah. of sites is 65. 65. Okay. So, like I said, our range is usually 50 to 200. Okay. Uh, I actually just closed a uh, deal for 170 on the high end today. Um, 2017. Woohoo! Thank you. But yeah, it is one of those. We usually we we find the most uh, need around 70, 80 sites is usually. Thank you much.
That was 